Still not on? Yeah. It kind of lost the effect now. <laughs> People of all shapes and sizes are going to end up in the same place, six feet under. We have a limited time on this earth, and our legacies are shaped by how we spend it. Some people obsess over being productive and end up overworking themselves, while others indulge in momentary pleasures only to find the time is flown by. And personally, I think knowing the proper balance between the two is very important. And the first step towards this goal is learning when to give up. There are bound to be tasks left unfinished, projects deserted, and laundry unwashed, as disgusting as that is. <laughs> we all, or the average human lifespan in the United States is 80 years, which translates to about over 2.5 billion seconds, and I intend to enjoy every single one of them. People with similar goals turn to others who claim to be motivational speakers. They ask us the question, is the class half full or is it half empty? Who cares? It's not going to solve our problems. Being optimistic, they say that being optimistic is going to have a great effect on our life. And Despite the cringeworthy way that they deliver these messages, there is some truth behind their words. There have been many studies that show the correlation between being confident and higher test scores. And personally, I think you can't take these words for gold. Right? Being confident also means that the person most likely knows the material or is at least smart and has some experience in the subject. Don't show up to your next test, pumping your chest out like you own the place, and then dropping a 40. Don't blame it on me, you should have studied. But what I'm trying to say here is that false confidence isn't going to help anyone. We really want to avoid it. And I have another question for all of you. How many of you have ever take an exam, you find you aced it, only two weeks later you found out you did terribly? <laughs> And only these guys raise their hands, but I'm sure all of you are lying. <laughs> but it's happened to a lot of people. And this is called the Dunning-Kruger effect. When you're so dumb, you don't realize how dumb you are. And <laughs> to avoid this, you have to prepare and practice as much as you can and as appropriately as you can. For any stressful situation, like an interview, a test, or a speech, you just need to work. And when you're in these situations, you can take solace in the back of your mind knowing, I put in the time, I deserve to be here, I'm ready for this. And practicing and all that is great, but there's another thing that you should really start doing. And it's separating your time for relaxing, and for productivity. Personally, I am the happiest when I'm running. Not just because I love the sport, but also because it forces me. It takes my mind off of all of my responsibilities, which include homework, and that's it. That's my only responsibility. But what I'm trying to say here is that the best breaks are ones in which you can't think about all the things that you have to do. How many of you have ever been tired after a long day of work and you decide, hmm, let me take a break and continue working after that? You sit back down at your desk or wherever you're working only to find yourself just as, or maybe even more exhausted than when you were before the break, right? And it's probably happened to a lot of us. And it's that feeling when you sit down that somebody from the corner of your room is watching you, judging you staring at you for sitting down and trying to relax. This nagging feeling, there's a great way to stop it. It's to stop thinking. Seriously. If you just clear your mind, you won't have to think about that person staring at you. And I'm sure a lot of people 
can attest to this. When you're just sitting there, staring into space, you get some really good ideas, right? And there's this ancient Chinese philosopher, and he said that when we stare into space and take our breaks and relax, that we create this mental stillness in which our best ideas come from. And he called it mind fasting, which is a really pompous way to say daydreaming. And personally, I can agree with this statement. There's this place that I can always go of peacefulness, of solitude. And that's where, honestly, I got my best ideas for this talk. And you're all probably wondering, where's this crazy place that this guy's talking about? It's the bathroom. <laughs> when I'm in there, nobody can bother me, or at least shouldn't bother me. <laughs> um, I don't have to listen to my mom telling me to clean my room, or the children screaming outside, or my phone buzzing at every random message. And if you take your phone into the bathroom, that's disgusting. <laughs> and so what I'm trying to say is that the best breaks, and also to be creative, you need to just stop and relax. And Slow everything down. I've been talking a lot about how you can relax, but what about being productive? That's what you're all here for. That's what we spend most of our time trying to achieve. Luckily, our 34th president, Eisenhower, has a solution for us from the grave. What a guy. <laughs> we all have a lot of tasks every day, and he proposed a system in which we can organize them into four different categories by asking two simple questions. Is it important and is it urgent, right? Being important means it has to get done and it will have a great impact on your life. Being urgent means it has to get done quickly. Something that's important and urgent should obviously be done as soon as possible. You can't get out of that one. And something that's not important, not urgent, just get rid of it. You don't need to waste your time on something that doesn't matter. What about tasks that are important yet not urgent? We face these very often. For example, a teacher assigning us a major project due, let's say, a month. We all plan. We're like, yeah, I'll do it two weeks before the due date. Nobody will. That we allow ourselves two weeks, and that gradually turns into one, two days, and the night before. It's happened to all of us. It's procrastination. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you to start early or start in the first three days because anybody who says they did is lying. <laughs> what you can actually do is to plan it out. Look at whatever assignment you have, figure out how long it will take, create a Google Docs, a Google Slides, write down your ideas. And this will really help you two weeks down the line when you decide to actually start. This is because most, or about like 50% of the effort that goes into doing something is in the initial phases of just getting started. A great example of this is trying to work out. The actual activity is somewhat difficult, but the place where most people fail is getting out of the door, getting yourself to go to the gym or go for a run, and just have knowing in the back of your mind, the doc is created, the slides are done, the MLA formatting is there, I have a plan, I know what I'm doing. Just having those thoughts in the back of your mind will make it so much easier when you decide to actually start. And when you're thinking about that, um, there's also still one kind of task that I haven't talked about. A task that is urgent, yet not important. That seems kind of contradictory. How can something need to be done really quickly, yet not matter? And a great example of that is cleaning your room. It has to get done quickly before somebody sees. But there aren't really any consequences. Even if somebody sees your dirty room, what are they going to think? Oh, this person is somewhat dirty, but... Nothing's going to happen. There's no consequence. Eisenhower's solution to this was to delegate the task. Essentially, get someone else to do the work that you don't want to do. Now, this won't work for most of us. We don't have people working under us. And us students don't work in teams to accomplish our homework. Or at least we shouldn't. <laughs> and so, I have a counter-argument to this kind of problem. You really, students at least, won't face this. We're not seen as reliable people who people can depend on. We're at most given chores here and there. And honestly, you just have to grit your teeth and bear it and get those done. And 
if you take into account all this organization of your tasks and actually getting started on your projects, you can start relaxing more. Just knowing that, oh, I've already started my work. I don't have to worry about it. And if you've slept through this whole thing, I'd say there's two major takeaways. The first is to really enjoy the time you're not working. Seriously, enjoy the moment. And the second is to just stop focusing on things that don't matter. Tasks that don't need your attention, don't need your stress.